Hey everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, this week's guitar lesson is inspired by the great Warren Haynes of Government Mule and the Allman Brothers. And obviously he's got his own solo career as well. And I don't know why it's taking me this long to do a Warren Haynes lesson. But anyway, I've got a lot of requests to do uh, this lesson. And so I finally put it together. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to play everything that I played in the intro, note for note. Uh, and you're going to want to download the, the jam track so that you can practice along and, and play with those two chords, a D chord and a C chord, repeated over and over again, um, which would be very similar to the type of jam that you would hear uh, Warren play on. Um, so anyway, uh, if you want to download the jam track and the tablature for this lesson, uh, go to and bonus video content as well, so there will be the part two video, uh, go to activemelody.com and look for EP064. That's the lesson number for this lesson. So let's go ahead and take a look at part one. All right, so this little jam is in the key of D, and it's really just two chords repeated over and over again. Uh, it's a D chord and a C chord. And it just goes back and forth between those two chords. You'll hear the keyboard doing that in the jam track. Um, and so it's pretty simple from a, from a structure standpoint. And sometimes the best jams, you know, when you think of, when you listen to the Allman Brothers or any of those great jams, a lot of times it'll just be, what the, the band is doing will be just a, re, you know, a repeated single chord or maybe just going back and forth between two chords, sometimes three. But th those will produce some of the best jams, I think, uh, because it's so predictable. And it's really fun to do as a musician to improvise over two chords because you know exactly what's coming and it, you, you get into a groove pretty easily that way. So in the key of D, uh, and I talk about this in just about every lesson if, when we're playing a solo, uh, you, your root fret is actually up here on the 10th fret. Because if you were playing a bar chord, a D bar chord, uh, your bar would go down here on the 10th fret. And so um, that's how you determine the root fret. Now, if, if that's the root fret, that means all these notes on this fret are... Uh, are the root are in the root notes of the minor pentatonic scale. So when I'm playing, you can see my pointer finger goes down on every one of these notes in the tenth fret. So all the bluesy licks would come here. But what Warren does, um, and what gives southern rock uh, really its feel, is he stays more in the major pentatonic scale than he does the minor pentatonic scale. Now every now and then he'll jump into the the minor, and that's that's a, a really nice thing to do to kind of be rooted in the major, but then jump to the minor from time to time. So the way that you get to the minor pentatonic scale from the major, I always find my root fret, get my basic blue scale or minor pentatonic scale, and then I shift everything down three frets from where we from here. So we'll go one, two, three. Now. That's, that becomes, that's your major pentatonic scale. So, um, so it's just an easy little trick to get from the minor to the major. And it all hinges off that root fret, at least in my mind. That's how I visualize it on the neck. So now that we've found the, uh, the major pentatonic scale, we can get all those kind of happy southern rock type licks. And that's when Warren spends a lot of his time there. So, um, all right, so now that we've kind of set the boundaries, let me show you the first thing that I did. Uh, the first lick I played was this thing. You can tell there's a little bit of a country influence there, but look at what's happening. Uh, so just keep in mind now, visualize on the neck, the, minor, the major pentatonic scale here. And so that would be pattern one. And I cover all the patterns, by the way, in the blues lead course at activemelody.com. So if that's pattern one, pattern two is here. Remember pattern two is those, those notes? Well, that's what I'm doing when I start that lick. Notice I'm starting right there, really, in pattern two of the major pentatonic scale. So I start by barring the first two strings on the 10th fret. And and then what I do, as soon as I play, I'm only going to play strings 2 and 1. I go ahead and hammer on to the 12th fret 2nd uh, string. And that's what gives it that kind of country feel. Um, so I, do, I play it like that, and then I release the, the, uh, the hammer, or the uh, 12th fret 2nd uh, string. And just play strings 1 and 2 on the 10th fret. 
I'm gonna take my middle finger and come down here to the 11th fret third string, and as soon as I play that, I slide right down to the 9th fret. So it happens quickly. So. So then I come to the, um, after I play the 7th fret, 3rd string, I come back to the 9th fret, 3rd string, and play those notes, those two notes. Now, that's one way to do it. Another way you might want to do this is go like this. Hear that little... That's That gives a little more uh, flair, and all I'm doing there, instead of just hitting the ninth fret third string twice I'm doing a little bend release pull off hammer on <laughs> so watch I'm just picking with my right hand I'm just picking that once and my left hand and uh, you know takes care of the rest of it pretty easy to do uh, it may take a little practice the first couple of times, but so anyway, you have two options for playing that. You could just play it straight, like that, or you could play. It. So then after that, I played this. Now let me show you that. And that's right out of the Warren Haynes uh, playbook. So what I'm doing, again, just notice where we're at. We're in that ma uh, major pentatonic scale at this point still. So I'm going to start here on the 9th fret, 4th string, 7th fret. You're going to notice a lot of notes bouncing between the 7th fret and the 9th fret. So we're going to start 9th fret, 4th string, 7th fret, 3rd string, 9th fret, 3rd string. And we're going to go 7th fret, 2nd string. And we're going to play the 8th fret, 2nd string. Now some of you are going, hey, wait a minute, that note's, that's, that's not in the, the major pentatonic scale. You're right, it's actually not the, in the pentatonic scale, but it is, when you think of the just the major scale, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, this note is actually, is one of the notes in that. So anytime you're playing the major scale, you can actually use this, this note as well. And don't think of it literally as this fret. I'm just saying, think of the pattern, you know, so visualize the the pattern that way it's you can you know you can put it anywhere you want on the neck and uh, depending on the key of the song so you do have this option okay let me back up so we have now after that I go it's just a hammer on pull off hammer on so watch my right hand so I'm just picking it once Hammer on to the 8th fret 2nd string, pull off, hammer on again to the 9th fret 3rd string. So let me back up all the way to the beginning just so that we can put it in context where we're at. I'll do it slowly. Here we go. So after this note... We're going to come back to the 7th fret 3rd string, back to the 9th fret 4th string, back to the 7th fret 3rd string, and then back to the 9th fret 3rd string. So let, let me put all that together. So we have... Okay, so that's the first little part. Now after that, then I came up here and went and again this is I, I really I watched a bunch of YouTube videos of Warren and wanted to pull some of his signature licks and I saw him do this on a live show. Love that. So what he's doing here, this is an interesting move, uh, is I'm coming to the, um, I'm now shifting from the major pentatonic scale to the minor, at least the minor area, right? All that minor bluesy stuff is right here. But listen to this. 
So what he did was, I mean, he's, you start here in the minor pentatonic scale, but really quickly he switches back to the major scale. So you've got this little intersection, and I talk about this quite a bit, uh, where the, the major pentatonic scale and the minor pentatonic scale combine. There's an overlap. So we think of major pentatonic scale going from here to here, uh, and then there, so in pattern one, and then pattern two is here, right? That's all major pentatonic scale, but but minor pentatonic scale is here. So the they the two scales overlap there. So anyway, when he does this run, he's going he's starting in the minor pentatonic scale, but he quickly goes back into the major. So twelfth uh, fret fourth string is the first note. Uh, and I, I play that with my ring finger with my left hand. And then I come to use my middle finger and go to the 11th fret, 3rd string. Then uh, 12th fret, 3rd string. Which is an interesting uh, few notes there. It, by putting in that middle finger there, that uh, 11th fret, 3rd string, that's a major note. And then... Uh, this is this note is actually a minor pentatonic scale, but it doesn't sound that way because of that major note. It it changed the feel of it. Uh, then I came up and went, and for that, that's just bouncing between the tenth fret and the twelfth fret on the second string. So we're starting on the tenth fret, and then we're going to the twelfth fret, and then I do this, and he does that a lot. Um, that's a, if you ever just want to throw in a little Warren Haynes, no matter where you're at, if you're playing blues or country or whatever, those little licks, um, little trills like that, and uh, really give it that sound. And that's pretty easy to do. It's just a hammer on and a pull off with your left hand. But it happens real quick like this. And just remember that because you can do it. You can do it anywhere. It doesn't have to. Anytime you just find two notes that are in a scale. Um, it gives you some options to give get that kind of Almond Brothers feel. Uh, all right, so that's where we are so far. Now after that, I came up and went, and that just was going to the twelfth fret second string and the uh, tenth fret first string. So th this note is uh, part of our root fret. So that's in the minor pentatonic scale and the major pentatonic scale. See, it's minor pentatonic scale, major pentatonic scale. So this note, which is the D note, right? Because we're in the key of D, um, that note will work in either. It'll So it, and on its own, it doesn't sound neither happy or sad. It needs other notes to define that for it. Uh, okay. Now after this, I came up and played 12th fret first string uh, with my ring finger and then I do a series of bends like that. Um, and these are full bends. A full bend is when you go from when you're bending the note from the the fret that you're on and you're trying to match the note that's two frets higher so that's the note I'm trying to hit and if you're new to bends um, you know that doing an extended bend like that might really be painful um, but just keep practicing it and notice I get this question a lot too and is what where does this string go? It's in the way, right? The, so the the two string, and what you're if you you can see, I'm just kind of pushing it out of the mm -hmm. way, and it ends up kind of going not under my fingernails, but it, it it goes between the string that I'm on and my fingernail. So it just kind of has its own little place on my finger. And once you find that, uh, you'll be able to do these bends a lot easier. So just this is a matter of playing with it over and over again, and eventually it'll just sort of click. So. After the bends, I come back down to the 10th fret, 1st string, and then I kind of wrap it up on the 12th fret, 1st first, first string. Like that.
that. And it's just the that's where uh, a lot of the nuances come in. Um, depending on how hard you hit it, do you want to pick it each time? You can get a totally different feel using those same notes with how you express it. And this is where you really, this is the, hard part, the part that's hard to teach, but I can't explain it. It's, it's um, just kind of going with your emotion, I guess, and how, if you were singing it, how you'd want your voice to, to be. I mean, your fingers kind of become your voice and that. I kind of like to let the note, in this case, I like to let it hit it strong and let it just sort of die out almost like it's running out of breath it's just kind of it seems a little more dramatic to me but there's all kinds of different ways you could do that so let's back up um and that's the thing like tablature doesn't really give you it's just a matter of listening to people do it and determining which parts you like and which parts you don't so it, you, over time you get that um but try and put emotion into it when you're playing. Don't just hit the notes. That's only half the equation. It's the expressiveness that uh, that you put on it really gives you your sound. Um, all right, so let me back up and play everything to that point. So what we have is... So then I come to this part that I've heard Warren do where it sounds like this. And that's a really nice little lick because it's really easy to do and you can throw this into just about anything you're doing. And let me show you what I'm doing and then I'll explain where it's coming from. So all we're doing is playing a D chord. So think of a D chord. You know how to make a D chord by now, surely. Well you take that same D chord and you're just playing it an octave higher. And all I'm doing, now that you know what the left hand is doing, um, I'm, I'm starting on the third string. So make the D chord with your left hand. With my right hand, I'm starting on the third string. I'm playing three, two, one. Now watch this. My pinky goes down right here on the 15th fret first string. And as soon as it does, you can see I'm flicking it when I take my pinky off doing a pull off like that so now we're going to come back to two and back to three so let's put it all together we have and if you were to do it down here uh, an octave lower where you make a D chord just a nice little lick that you can remember. Now, some of you are probably thinking, yeah, it's great if you're playing in the key of D, but what if you're playing in another key? Well, you can still, you can transpose this. If you remember where the root fret is, everything hinges off the root fret. Um, so if this is root fret, if this is home bass, in other words, the 10th fret, and we know that the blues, or you know, the minor pentatonic scale is here, well, then I know that... Um, you know, just based on that, that positioning, if I, if I want to just play off that, I think, well, okay, so if this note is the, the top part of the, the minor pentatonic scale, I'm just going to slide everything up one from there. I know it's kind of, kind of weird, but that's how, that's how I think of it. I just think of, I find where I'm at, and then... Uh, once you once you make find a little chord shape like this, um, it's always going to work because it's just relative to your root fret. So if you're in the key of G, for example, it would look like this. So uh, anyway, hopefully you you see what I mean. You may and it's going to take a little studying maybe in the beginning to understand. You know, you may have to sit and literally count to find these these shapes, but they'll come to you if you use them. So try and use this leg in, in the things that you do because it's really cool. Now, the other thing I did, so that was uh, the first time I went through it, I played. And then the second time I went through it, I went. So 
So this is, uh, and I always get made fun of because I don't use my pinky that often, but this is a case where I actually am. Um, this time I'm reaching all the way up here to the 17th fret first string. And I'm just doing the same thing. Just doing that pull off. You can hear I'm just kind of flicking it when I pull it off. So the, the D shape stays the whole time. And it just goes back and forth between uh, those two. All right, so let's go ahead and back up and play everything uh, from the beginning up to this point. Thank <laughs> you. 